there really are two selves within each and every one of us. Um, Muktananda called the ego, the part of us that has edge got out, E-G-O, edge got out, the false self. And the false self is uh, this part of us that is not authentic. It is, um, it is the ego. This false self is the part of us that is always trying to, trying to win, trying to own things, trying to prove itself. We send our kids off to school and we tell them, you know, be ahead of everybody else, win, no matter what, and so on. And, and they have a tendency just to believe that who they are are these bodies, even though the body they're in is going to change and you'll never be able to find it again. And then there's within each and every one of us a higher self. And this higher self is, um, is really the soul, it's really the spirit, it's really, it's really God. But these two selves are sort of constantly at, they're not at war so much with each other, but there's, uh, there's this battleground that we have within us. I'll give you an example of it in my own life. Um, somebody on the internet, a guy named Watkins, has put out a list, because there's lists for everything the 100 most spiritually influential people alive. And they put out this list, 100 people. And they rank from number one to 100. And I'm on the list. Not only am I on the list, but I am, according to this list, and they've got all this criteria of how you get on this list, I am the third most spiritually influential person alive. So the the spiritual part of myself, my soul, the higher place within myself, um, says to me, this is not relevant. You're not any better than anybody else, just because somebody has put you on a list. In fact, you shouldn't even, be con you shouldn't even know about that list. And perhaps the people who are most spiritually influential aren't even on that list and don't even want to be on that list because they don't care about those kind of rankings and comparisons and so on. But then there's the ego over here that says, what do you mean number three? Well, what's going on with that? And who are these people who are more spiritually influential than you? And how are you gonna take them down? It shouldn't make any difference. Who I am is, uh, you know, is the same as everyone else. We all come from the same place and we all return back to the same place, but um, then the ego says, let's see, the two people ahead of me on this list, one of them is Eckhart Tolle, <laughs> but he had Oprah, and he got on there every week, and that's not fair, so, and then there's the Dalai Lama, <laughs> and I figure Eckhart and I maybe can get together and take the Dalai Lama out of this thing. <laughs> or maybe I should align with the Dalai Lama, and uh, anyway, the ego is doing this, um, this number on us but there's also the part of us that is divine and this is the place that I'm addressing here in this program there's a quote from Joel Goldsmith uh, Joel wrote so many great books a parenthesis in eternity was one of them and this is what Joel said he said then there are those who reach a stage in which they realize the futility of this constant striving and struggling for the things that perish, things which after they are obtained prove to be shadows. It is at this stage that some persons turn from this seeking for things in the outer realm to a seeking for them from God. And that's who you tuned into today on this program. I have left this uh, pursuing things and money and fame and winning and being better than others. It's taken me a while, but it has been, it has been a, a powerful journey. As a matter of fact, I had said to uh, my ex-wife, um, <clears throat> I said, can you imagine? Did you ever in your wildest dreams, could you ever have imagined that you would be married to the third most spiritually influential person alive? And she said, I just, she said, they didn't call me when they made that list. And she said also, she said, I don't want to um, upset you, 
dear. <laughs> but you're not in my wildest dreams. All right. <laughs> So moving to this higher place is, uh, is really um, understanding that in, in the second chapter of uh, Wishes Fulfilled, uh, I call it the higher self. And it gets defined very specifically by this great Bulgarian teacher, his name was Omram Mikhail Ivanov. And he's, he was teaching what's called the initiatic sciences. And I have had um, his teachings show up in my life in a very powerful way. I've studied his uh, writing. I've listened to many of his recorded lectures uh, that took place back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And, uh, <clears throat> and I, I, I brought a quote of his that I'd like to share with you. Our higher self is perfect omniscient and almighty a fragment of god himself a pure transparent luminous quintessence i love that i love great writing like that and that within each and every one of us there is a place inside of each and every one of us that is all-knowing that is almighty that is actually a fragment of God. He then went on to say, the Creator has planted within every creature a fragment of himself, a spark, a spirit of the same nature of himself. And thanks to this spirit, every creature can become a Creator. And this means that instead of always waiting for their needs to be satisfied by some external source, Human beings can absolutely work inwardly by means of their own thoughts, their own will, and their own spirit to obtain nourishing, healing elements that they need. This is why he said to all of us, the teaching I bring to you is of the spirit of the creator and not of matter. A spark, a spark that is in each and every one of us. And... <clears throat> This spark, I want you to be able to recognize because that spark, I'd like to see you have it grow from just a tiny little spark, which means you can hardly see it, to a fragment, to a piece, to a larger chunk, if you will, to a section, so that this spark within you that you see up here is growing, and growing and growing until it absolutely becomes even more than you imagined. T.S. Eliot, the great American poet, said, we shall not cease from exploration, but at the end of all of our exploring will be to return to the place from which we originated, but to know it for the first time. I paraphrase that, it's off a little. To know it for the first time. I think that T.S. Eliot might have been speaking about death, but I'm not. I think that we can come to know this place from which we originated, the place to which we return, all of us, by allowing this spark to become something bigger than just an occasional thing where you extend an act of kindness someplace or you have it at the church or at the mosque or at the synagogue on a holy day or a holy observance that it can become your way of being there was a great teacher in india his name was vivekananda vivekananda came to the west as a uh, as a young teacher a very profound teacher and he was asked the question, but how do you do this? How do you, how do you access this higher self? How do you make this your reality? And he said these words to his devotees, and I say them to you. He said, in the springtime, go out and observe the blossoms on the fruit trees. He said, the blossoms vanish of themselves as the fruit grows, and so too, will the lower self, the false self, the ego, vanish 
as the divine grows within you. It's about allowing yourself to recognize you must have this spark because this is what you came from and this is what you return to. And as this spark becomes a fragment and becomes a section and becomes larger and larger, you reach what I call in Wishes Fulfilled, the third chapter, the highest self. And what is the highest self? This is the one that's going to surprise you a bit. The highest self is the self that you haven't been trained to believe in. You've been trained to believe in your ordinary awareness. Your highest self is where you begin to recognize your connection to your source.